Cockpit Race Fail, a cross-out video by Dangerously Incompetent. In the last update, with all the other race changes, like the new tracks and whatnot, there's a new cabin. The cockpit cabin, you can see it nestled here amongst my hovers. Uh, you can't craft it, it comes in a pack, which you buy from the shop. So I went to the market and I bought one for coin. And thinking, it's come out with a rate with all the other race changes, bound to be good for race. Right? Not so much. Turns out I should have had a closer look at the cockpit's perks before I went and bought one in order to use it in race. Caveat Empor and all that. I had the idea in my head that the cockpit cabin would buff the power of my boosters and thus the acceleration of the vehicle. Really helpful in race, I thought. That's why, and that's why I went and bought the cockpit. But no, always increases booster charge by 50% means the booster fuel has gone up by 50%, not the booster power. An AVI booster with the cockpit cabin goes from 60 to 90 fuel. While well, that's handy in a battle, but it's no use in a race because every time you go through a checkpoint, you get a booster fuel top up. You don't run out of booster fuel anymore in race. And the second part of the, that first perk, and heating speed by 30%, so your boosters now overheat faster because you've got the cockpit cabin. That's no good at all. The second perk um, is to do with damage, which is doesn't happen in race. So all in all, the perks for the cockpit cabin, they're no good for race purposes. And, uh, and the rest of the stats are a mixed bag. Power is 4.5, which is lower than the 5.5 of the HAL, which I usually use. Cabin speed is 105, which is faster than the HAL's 90, and the mass is a bit heavier. So a mixed bag with the stats. For racing purposes, not such a good buy at 1,300 coins. Having bought it, I thought I might as well give it a go, because it is light and it is fast. Maybe I can use that to gain an advantage in race. I put it in a hover build, a six hover build, not four, not five, but six hover build in order to, in to increase the ride height. See my video experiment number 13 for further details. Because a high ride height means a higher practical top speed because you're less likely to scrape the bottom of the vehicle on a bump and blow up when you're going really fast. I kept the build light, I only used AVI boosters instead of blast offs or even Hermes to also keep the ride height high and to improve the acceleration. You know, lower mass equals more acceleration for the same amount of power. I achieved my design aims for the build. Let's go over to the measuring Leviathan and have a look at the ride height. Gently, gently. Look at that. Look at that ground clearance. That's going to give a high practical top speed, isn't it? No scraping the bottom on bumps for this one. And the acceleration is not bad. Let's see just how fast we can go without blowing up for scraping a bump. Well over 400 kilometers an hour. Almost 500 before the AVI boosters overheated. They overheat really quickly with the extra 30% from the cockpit. So I then added a seal radiator to counteract that overheating and ended up with you know, a competitive race build for Tuesday's race on rocky track because that's really fast and not many tight turns. Except it isn't competitive because it's got a crippling handling issue. Let me show you. In race, going fast, come to a turn, and then boost out the turn, and the vehicle spins in the opposite direction. You know, turn left, then hit the boosters, and it spins right. And at first I thought, I've got my boosters unbalanced. They're not balanced around the centre of mass. I'm put, when I fire them, I'm pushing more on the right-hand side, so I'm turning left when I fire the boosters. But it's not that, because if I go fast again and then turn left and hit the boosters it spins right so the spin is determined by 
which way I last turned. Confused? I certainly am. I've had this issue in other build, race builds before, but this build's got it really, really bad. And I've no idea why it's happening, so I've no real idea how to stop it. I can compensate for this inexplicable spin by pressing the left turn button or the right turn button as it happens as I'm boosting out of the corner but sometimes the effect happens a lot sometimes it happens a little and sometimes very rarely it doesn't happen at all and there's no visual indication that it is going to happen so you end, it's very easy to overcompensate or undercompensate with the turning and you end up smashing into the wall or turning around and pointing in the wrong direction which means instead of boosting out of the turn and into the straight I'm struggling to get my vehicle to point in the right direction which has a negative impact on my lap times. I tried changing the build around to see if I could eradicate this issue. I moved the centre of thrust by moving the boosters around. I changed the centre of mass and I changed the cabin position relative to the centre of thrust and the centre of mass and nothing seemed to work. The only practical solution I, I found was to only fire half of my boosters immediately after coming out of the turn because that didn't trigger the inexplicable spin and then wait one or two second, seconds before, before firing up the rest of the boosters to get maximum thrust. But of course that means I'm not accelerating out of the turn as fast as I could be and has a negative impact on my lap times. Occasionally, I would spot other racers suffering the same inexplicable spin under boost, but never the race winners. Either they've figured out how to compensate really well for it, or their builds aren't suffering the issue. And I don't know what the issue is, I don't know why it's happening, and I don't know how to stop it. I searched around on the internet through the Crossout community, but no one's talking about it as far as I can find. I mean, it doesn't help that I don't know what to call it. It's not understeer, it's not oversteer, and it's not fishtailing. What do you call it? And all in all, Tuesday's race session was very frustrating for me. So I just sold the cockpit cabin and got my money back. If you are thinking of buying the cockpit cabin in order to take it racing, I'd advise against it. At least until the new part premium has worn off and the price has dropped a bit. 